Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for this panel discussion about creative careers. My name is Liv and I work in the recruitment and outreach team at NUA. I'll be online throughout today's session to make sure we get as many of your questions answered as possible. We're joined today by some really exciting and talented individuals who are working across many different practices in the creative arts. This is a really fantastic opportunity for you to ask them absolutely anything, to get their advice, to hear about their experiences, and also about their own individual journey to where they are today. Before we get going with introductions, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about how the session is going to work. Hopefully you should be able to see on your screen a Q&A button, and that's where you can submit your questions to us and I'll be putting them to the different members of the panel. There's no such thing as a stupid question and you can submit as many as you like and we'll do our best to get as many of them answered as possible over the next hour. And it's also fine if you have a question just for a specific panellist, if you could just mark that clearly when you submit your question, that would just help me a lot in asking the right person. We'll also be recording this session today, so if you experience any technical problems, please don't worry, as we'll be making the recording available to you afterwards by email, so you won't miss anything. If a member of the panel experiences any technical problems or any of our internet connection drops out, we will try to reconnect for around five minutes, so please do just bear with us if that happens, but hopefully it won't. <laughs> So we'll get started very shortly with introductions, but please do start sending in your questions to us and we'll get going with those very shortly. So I'm going to pick on people individually now to introduce themselves. Um, so we'll start with Genevieve. Right, thank you, Liv. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Genevieve Rudd and I'm a community artist and I grew up in Golston and I live in Golston still. Um, so I didn't choose art at school, but um, I'm a full-time community artist. Um, so I went to um, Morton first and Lingrove and then East Norfolk Sixth Form. And then I was encouraged by um, my photography tutor at the Sixth Form to go to university. And um, yeah, here I am. And I look forward to um, sharing some of my journey um, with you all today. Thanks, Genevieve. And then Owen, if we could come to you next. Okay, hi there. Um, <clears throat> my name's Owen, Owen Mathers. I'm an illustrator, designer and artist. Um, I grew up locally, went to Wyndham College where I was into oil painting. That then took me to Norwich Art School where I've then, I then went into graphic design. I've been working as a graphic designer since 2004. I've kind of gone full circle and started drawing again. I'm now, I'm now more of a freelance illustrator alongside that so yeah that's me brilliant thank you and joseph hello my name is joseph connolly um, i'm from wisbeach in the fenland district of norfolk in cambridgeshire um i'm an actor and a writer um and re i um, um own a theater company called the fen city players um, and recently we worked at the norwich arts center um and live streamed a show that i'd written um, yeah, and I'm currently based in Wisbeach still. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And Sam, finally. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Coe. I run a business called The Wharf Academy, which provides music tuition to schools around Norfolk. I'm also a choir leader. Um, I have a choir in Great Yarmouth and I'm also a musician. I, um, I perform around the country. Uh, I did perform around the country, not so much <laughs> this year. And yeah, I started my business when I was 21. Um, and yeah, I, I live in Norfolk. I live in, I live in Norwich specifically. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to answering your questions today. Brilliant, thanks guys. Um, so I think we'll get started with the first question that's come in, which is a big one. And it's, is there anything you wish you'd known when you were figuring out what to study and what you wanted to do? Um, so I think we'll come to Owen first on that one. Um, yeah, things I wish I'd known. <clears throat> I think um, I, I'd want to know um, what, what opportunities there were out there potentially a bit more, like what kind of um, industry or, or, you know, work, work opportunities locally. I know personally coming from a design background, there was, it was very more London centric, um, say 15, 16 years ago. And I think now it's, a, you know, there's people working, you know, around the country doing great work. So, um, kind of knowing what opportunities are out there 
and and how to break into those um, would be good. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. I think another another thing. I think alongside um, education and skills and all that sort of thing, it's a lot about your individual confidence and how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, how you communicate. I think I didn't realize how important that is. Um, I think that's the, the key thing for me, yeah. Great, thank you. And Joseph, what, what about you? What do you wish you'd known? Um, so when I was choosing where to study, I think there was a big pressure around um, actors thinking they had to go to an, an elitist drama school, um, which the auditions can be very expensive, the tuition can be very expensive. Um, and I wish I'd, 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 I just went to a regular, I went to a University of West London. Um, and once you have graduated and you've got your first job, you're in the same boat as everybody else. It's not looked upon of where you trained, but before this, I, there was a big pressure. I need to go to drama school, I need to go to drama school. And like um, feeling a bit of a failure if you did, when you went to an audition, you didn't get the audition. Um, so that is something I wish I'd known. I also wish I'd known about um, networking. Um, and making them links with um, the local theatres to where you live or another actors within the region or in your friendship group um, and um, making your own work as well. I wish I'd known more about that before um, before training. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Brilliant, thank you. And Genevieve, do you, do you have anything that you wish you'd known? Well, I, I think in terms of the kind of practical side of understanding that you'll be you know in my in my work as a community artist I'm self-employed so understanding how that works and how you write you know funding bids and how you get money and how you kind of do the contracts all that kind of um quite business side of things that actually is completely like the nuts and bolts of of your day-to-day -day life knowing that it would be like that <laughs> how many emails and you know drawing up um, you know agreements and doing your bookkeeping I think that's the kind of maybe the kind of boring stuff but actually that's the kind of practical stuff you know to know that you know if you want to put something on like Joseph said about making your own work you might have to apply for a, a funding bid um, and like Owen said you know it is about that kind of confidence um, but then if you don't know how do you know how to be confident about it? <laughs> <laughs> Great thank you and Sam? Yeah, following up on what Genevieve said, exactly that. So when I was studying, my focus was so much on being a musician. Um, I, I know how to be a musician, I can make music, and I'm always constantly learning, but I didn't know how to do my tax return when I needed to do my tax return. Um, and also going out and getting work, being, again, confident enough to mm. approach people. One thing that I found incredibly helpful when I first started out in business was networking, going out and learning how to speak to a stranger in a room about your work and what you do and how you might be able to get some more work that's incredibly important um, and I think you can pick up all of these skills in so many different ways you know it doesn't have to be something that's specifically taught to you it can be watching someone else do it or it can be I don't know going to a different social event that you wouldn't necessarily go to and putting yourself out of your comfort zone slightly mm. um, but all of those things about just general day-to-day self-employment freelancing it's not just about your craft there's so there's so much more to it great thank you and then we've had a question about um what options you took at kind of school and college so it would really be helpful for everyone I think to understand your journeys a little bit more and perhaps how different or similar they might have been um so Genevieve could we start with you and could you tell us kind of what GCSEs A levels B techs whatever you might have taken I can't remember what GCSEs I did, to be honest. So um, <laughs> I know one of them included geography. I know that it won't, wouldn't have included um, art. And I know I remember doing some cooking, so maybe I did food tech. <laughs> and then when I went on to do A-levels, I did um, photography A-level. I did English language A-level, sociology. And then I did um, the first year, which I think is A2, um, or maybe it's AS. Uh, media studies but then I dropped that um, but I, I didn't you know as I said I didn't choose art at school but I was interested in photography and then choosing kind of photography and media um, it was a bit kind of the perception around me from my family was a little bit like oh what you know what is that what what's that gonna do <laughs> but actually um, yeah I'm really glad I kind of stuck to my guns there but um, 
yeah I didn't sort of choose a kind of you know fine art or, or those kind of subjects and I was actually really interested in sociology so really interested in people and cultures and actually I think that has a really although I didn't know it at the time that's really transferable to community arts you know your work you're exploring cultures I work a lot in museums and galleries it's about people it's about communities um so yeah I didn't know at the time but it's you know actually really useful to have that as a kind of base for my practice great thank you and Sam what about you um yeah GCSE is again similar to Genevieve I can't remember what I did I made I remember making a trifle at some point so I must have done home economics <laughs> Um, but for my A-levels, I did music, business studies and economics. And I mean, music was always a given. I was always going to take music A-level. I took business studies because my father was a self-employed car mechanic. And he said, you know what? You should probably just learn about making money at some point, you know. <laughs> so why don't you do business studies? And then I did economics. Oh, that awful, that awful subject. But I did it because um, my friend was taking it. But actually, it turned out to be a really good choice for me because trying to um, put a creative career, trying to put music into something that can make you profit, having an understanding of profit and loss accounts and cash flow forecasts and all of those things, a basic understanding, was it, it turned out to be so important. I go into a meeting with my accountant now, and I'm not going to lie, I'm always scared. I always feel out of my debt still. But at least I have those basic skills of money um, and that really does help, particularly if you're a creative person and that doesn't come naturally. Mm -hmm. Pushing yourself again out of your comfort zone and doing something that's a bit more sensible perhaps will stand you in good stead as you, as you move forward. Brilliant, thank you. And Joseph? Yeah, when I was at school, I didn't know, um, acting was kind of a hobby. I just did drama on the site out of school. I did construction GCSEs. Um, level three in construction, sock and build walls. Um, and then I also did drama as well, but um, mostly um, it was out of school that I did drama. And I had to retake a lot of my GCSEs um, after I left school. I went um, and did a BTEC. Uh, first of all, it was health and social care randomly because I wanted to be a paramedic. I wasn't really sure I could make a career out of being an actor or a writer. Um, so I did health and social care first. Then I went and did a BTEC in acting. And I had to retake my English GCSEs. I didn't really have a very good time at school. Um, so a lot of mine was retakes. Um, and then, yeah, so finally I did a BTEC in acting. Um, but yeah, GCSEs first, I did construction. I did do drama though. But Makes for a great story though. So that's... Yeah, I can pa yeah, paint and decorate and I can paint and <laughs> oh, oh, so there you go. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And Owen? I think I'm one of the few who can re remember his GCSEs. I I've, I've written them here, yeah. Um, I know options. I did geology, I did electronics, um, history, geography, uh, obviously, but I never did design because the design for me at high school was we were designing, they were designing like sellotape dispensers and boring things like that. And I went down the route of I'm a, I'm a, I want to be a proper artist. I'm going to study the Dutch masters. I'm going to paint oil painting like that. And I, and I did, you know, that's that's the way I went. So I went to A levels, did art um did geology yeah did geology a level that's right and physics which was a massive error because i was kind of got i was quite good at science but it's, it's a big jump to a level and i like cosmology i like stars i like space i didn't want to work out all these equations everyone was doing this really mathematical stuff um but i have still got that side of me so i think when i went and did a degree in design it's 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 several things it's it's creativity it's knowledge of software so and there is technical stuff in there and there is working things out like it, you know it, more in graphic design when you're designing a book or something you're working out how the page flows what how how big your margins are there's all like maths involved in that um and just that that way of thinking of the kind of analytical way of thinking of of problem solving which comes into illustration art and design is Okay, I've got a, I've got an idea here. How can I best do that? Um, that kind of thing. So I kind of just did what I love doing and did what I was good at, and that's that's how I ended up where I am. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And then um, Joseph, we've we've had a question specifically for you, which is, what would you say is an important thing to know about or do as an aspiring actor? 
so an important thing to know about um would be um when i was training people a lot of people's hung up on getting an agent um if to obviously get you work well, if you are successful in getting an agent you need to still put the graft in to find yourself work um whether that's you're actively looking online you're um getting in touch with theatres going to watch and always watch performances as well always going obviously right now we're in a different type of um situation but there is a lot of live streaming stuff going on um keep watching theatre keep reading plays um but you, if you are successful in getting an agent make sure that you're are being active and always looking for work as well um and make your own work as well that was something that i got taught um when i trained um because it's hard it's very hard um to be an actor um in the field but if you're making your own work and i think genevieve mentioned it earlier learning how to do um arts bids and stuff uh, for the arts and uh, for the Arts Council, um, that's something really um, important to learn how to do. But yeah, so just keep the plates spinning. That's what I would say. I don't know if that answers the question. Um, elaborate maybe on, so when you first started making your own work, could you maybe give us an example? Yeah, so I first, um, so my first piece so recent so last month i worked for the norwich i worked in the norwich arts center and we live streamed a performance that piece i'd been working on for quite a few years um i actually did it as my dissertation piece um and it was it ended up being like a fourth draft and the whole story had completely changed um and um it's important to it, it, say I, I just started writing the script get it up on his feet and get someone else to read it for you um, I was a bit shy at sending someone my work. I was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, no one's ever read it before. I don't know if I'm any good. Um, but obviously, the first first draft you're going to do probably isn't going to be the best. Um, but getting people's feedback who are in the field and as well, um, getting rid of the inhibitions of trying to impress the person you're sending it to. I think if you're, if you're sending it to them and they're going to give you critical feedback and you care about their opinion, then they, it shouldn't be um, trying to impress them. I don't know if that answers the question or if I've just gone around the house is. No, I think that's all really useful information. And I can see everybody nodding about kind of the whole giving up your inhibitions about asking people for feedback. Um, so Genevieve especially was nodding quite vigorously there. Is that something you've kind of experienced as part of your career? Yeah, I think, you know, just to kind of pick up on what Joseph was saying and what, what Owen said earlier about confidence and Sam as well, I think we've all mentioned it's that confidence to kind of put yourself out there. And I feel like I've had you know, a decade of <laughs> walking out of my comfort zone and sort of making a new, you know, kind of making new steps has been, you know, every every year it's kind of been something and sometimes it feels like every day, you know, you're kind of stretching yourself and I think it's kind of getting that balance because that is really tough and really, really scary. Um, you know, I'm naturally, um, you know, probably a very introverted person, you know, a quite a quiet, reflective person. Um, you know, I actually really love time on my own and lockdown sort of suits me a little bit, but there's, you know, but actually what I do is about groups and it's about that relationship and it's about, you know, those kind of making that dynamic in a room and, and leading a group of people and that does take confidence, but that's come over, you know, several years of, of putting myself out there, you know, little bit by little bit and, um, and, you know, knowing that, you know, it's fine if you, if it messes up, it doesn't work, you know, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Kind of keep going at it but yeah i think a lot of it does come to that that confidence which grows over time you know that exposure to you know that that this new field if you know if you're starting out um yeah great thank you um and then we've had a question through about what has been the highlight of your career and um, so i'd really love to hear from each of you on this but i'll go to sam first um, yeah, okay, so I feel like my career is in three different little separate boxes, so I'll kind of, I'll do that for both, but um, my music career, my highlight is probably the last album that I put out, uh, fully kind of produced, recorded, uh, worked on with an uh, independent label, so building that relationship with an independent label, having someone that liked my songs, and again, it goes back to, to what Joseph was saying about confidence in your own ability, um, and putting that out to somebody and somebody actually saying, do you know what, I like this enough to give you money to record it. So that was a highlight for me, putting that out. Um, with my choir, 
I, I work in Great Yarmouth with a choir of um, amateur singers. And one of the highlights was last year, we did a community choir concert when we got lots of different choirs from around Norfolk together to sing in the same room. Um, and just seeing the effect that music can have on adults, actually. I know we work with a lot of children with music, but sometimes we forget that adults that need to revisit their kind of past musical youth or whatever it may be, um, and, the, and the power of song, that was a, a really spectacular day for me. And then bizarrely, the highlight of running my business, the music school here, has actually been this year. So in March, um, everything went into lockdown, of course. My business literally stopped overnight. My revenue streams just stopped. But it's been a real highlight working with my team to make sure that we can get through this and we can still trade. Uh, putting in an application for a culture recovery fund grant, which was um, successful. I mean, the day we got the email to say that we had been given that grant, I don't think I've ever felt elation like it. Um, so yeah, bizarrely trying to turn this year, which could be incredibly negative and still is quite negative, but finding the silver lining, pulling the team together, diversifying, having to use my business brain a little bit more creatively in order to kind of ride this wave. I found it, I found it really satisfying actually. So it's been, it's been a highlight for me, weirdly. Amazing, thank you. And Owen? Hi, uh, yeah, I think I've got a, a, a similar two or three strands like, like, like Sam with, with highlights of my career. I mean, firstly, as a, as a designer, I think there's been a few, a few points. I think um, the, a, a good one for me was probably back in 2016, I, I was working in, for Virgin Money, uh, in-house creative there, and um, <clears throat> I designed a direct mailer, which was a kind of like a colouring book themed leaflet. And I, I kind of pitched it to the management. It went up the chain. They loved the idea. Um, I spent two weeks hand drawing all these scenes, um, printed a million of them. They went all around the country. Um, it got really well, well kind of received. I went to an award ceremony in London. Um, we did, I was a runner up. So it was a bit of an in joke at my work that I was um, award nominated, you know, <laughs> not award winning. But um, I, I'll take that. I'll take the nomination. Um, so that was design wise. And then as kind of an artist in my own practice of making drawings and things, that's kind of what I do. I draw a lot of Norwich um, streets and scenes. I um, hosted my own solo exhibition summer 2018, which is something I, I, I really wanted to do. And, um, you know, it, it was a lot of um, my investment to, to make that happen, you know, but I, I really, I'm really happy that I did that and it kind of raised my reputation quite a bit. Um, and then I think the main, highlight for my illustration kind of career has come this year as well so I, I've been speaking with um, Lisa Angel brand that's started in Norwich and is kind of you know they, they, they wholesale worldwide and around the country and what have you and um, I was working on like a collaborative range with them which I started back late last year and obviously corona happened and that was kind of the production was paused but I had all these lovely things that I'd drawn it was just we didn't know when it's going to happen and then that finally um, launched in kind of August, September. So that was great to have that come out and it was a real positive thing to happen in these these odd times, you know. Um, there wasn't a huge launch um, party, but you know, that it, it, it happened. So it's, it's great, yeah. Great, yeah, thank you. And then Joseph? Um, yeah, so I was, I've got a few things as well. Um, I was in a show last year um, similar to Owen, I was I was Olivia. I was um, nominated for an Olivia Award within wow. the, within, within the, the show. The show was put for affiliated theatre for an Olivia, but I was a runner up. But <laughs> we, I'm still Olivia nominated, so that was quite a big um, thing. I also so the director of the show, who he's also Olivia nominated, worked wow. with us on. Um, I got um, a grant from the Arts Council, um, um, which I recently. Um, for a research and development of, of a show that I'd written called Muck, which I'd recently done um, last month at the Norwich Arts Centre. So I got to work with, so it was joy getting the grant, but then I also got to work with the Olivier nominated director of the show that was in previous um, for this research and development, which was fantastic. Um, it was a really highlight of my career. Also, I forgot to mention I'm a teacher at, um, um, I'm a facilitator, a dra drama teacher at the Angles Theatre in Wiz Beach. Um, it's um, one of the oldest Georgian theatres in Little Fenland, Wisbeach. Um, we got to do the New Connections Festival with the young people um, just before lockdown happened. 
um, and it was absolutely brilliant and they, I'm, I'm very proud of all of them and that was really really a highlight of um, my directing and facilitating career yeah brilliant thank you and Genevieve um, I suppose without sounding too kind of flushy and sentimental, but I think it's just, you know, those really kind of little moments that happen with participants. And I think, you know, there, there's the kind of big stuff, you know, getting the grant and, you know, that 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 is such a buzz, you know, to, to have your project back, you know, your idea that you've come up with and spent, you know, many weeks and months and years working on. I think, you know, I've, you know, really enjoyed those big, um, buzzes and feeling backed but it's I think the things that kind of really stand out for me was you know it's kind of quite small moments with you know participants that I've worked with and I've worked with people in all kind of settings and um, you know from from people with dementia to youth offending teams in hospitals GP surgeries um, day centres homeless support services you know all, all sorts of places and I think you know sometimes it's working with that person over you know several weeks and several months and and you know you can kind of see them change and see their confidence grow and feel like they're more able to you know express themselves creatively um that that can feel like a massive buzz but it probably on the surface looks like a very small thing happening but for me that that's what what keeps me going you know that that's what feeds me as a as a practitioner Great. That's really interesting to hear about. And I think it's so crucial with the creative arts that with a, a lot of people, you have an opportunity to really make an impact on other people's lives, um, which is amazing. And we've had another question through um, for Joseph, actually, um, who's proving very popular, um, <laughs> which is all about how do you deal with nerves? But this is also something I think all of us can probably mm. relate to. But Joseph, we'll go to you first. Breathe. <laughs> breathe um yeah do you know what i'm i still i could do i did a four weeks four week run last year and i was every time just before we got on stage me and the other actors say why are we doing this for why are we putting ourselves through this nerves every every single time so they don't go um but as soon as you're out on the stage um be in the moment tell the story and forget about what's around you i guess but keep breathing um that's the best best place because you will always get nerves because nervous if you're i think there's if you're not getting nervous there's something not quite right there actually i think if you before you're about to perform i think if you don't get some sort of nerves to to fuel you as the adrenaline i think there's something not quite right but yeah breathe and enjoy it and then sam do you have any other advice about hand, how to handle nerves I actually really suffer with nerves and bizarrely it's gotten worse the older that I've gotten um, but the the one thing for me is preparation if I know that I have practiced and prepared as much as I possibly can I've gotten into the mindset of you can do no more if it goes wrong you can style it out so be, being able to ad lib as an artist is an incredibly important thing um, as Joseph said, breathe as a singer, as an actor, anybody that uses your voice, breathe. Um, but yeah, I also think it's a bit of a mindset and it all comes back to this, this key word of confidence. If you can go out there and pretend that you are in control of what you're doing, even if you're not necessarily feeling in control of what you're doing, you can get away with a lot of stuff, I, think, I feel anyway. Great, thank you. And then we have had a question through, um, it's quite a tricky one. It's It says, my parents don't want me to study art. What would you say to them? Um, so maybe we'll go to Genevieve on this one, I think. Um, I don't know if I'd sort of maybe broadcast what, <laughs> what I might have said to my parents. Um, I think, I'd, although, you know, I'm quite, I'm probably, yeah, as I say, quite an introvert, but I'm quite headstrong and I am quite sure. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, you believe in your horoscopes, I'm a Leo, I'm quite, you know, quite a strong, mm -hmm. I can be quite a strong character. <laughs> and um, I think it's about, um, I think it's about trust. And I think it's about, you know, that kind of, um, doing your research into you know as much as you can know and you you know your parent can know your you know your guardian your carer can know about it as well because I think it is often that kind of unknown thing this kind of misty career this misty sector that happens over there maybe yeah. and as much as you can know and kind of relay that information to your parent about actually this is what the creative industries is like 
this is you know how it's a you know one of the biggest growing industries you know really kind of solid industry I think that helps and I think also there's something about you know if you're doing something that you love and it's coming from you know somewhere in here and it's driving you from a different place you can go so much further you know than if you're just kind of plodding along you know doing something that you're not really into you feel like you're biding your time actually the kind of how much you can strive because you're committed on a different level and I think you know you've kind of got a better chance of success if you're doing something that you love you know you're going to do this every day for the rest of your life you know your working life you might as well enjoy it and um, you know there are actual jobs out there you know in the arts um, so I think it's just kind of finding that evidence to say yeah like this is what the stats say you know I know Nua has lots of that that kind of information um, and just yeah stick it under the under their noses and <laughs> yeah we do actually thank you Genevieve for pointing that out we do have a brilliant um booklet called your creative future which has some of those really handy stats in there so um if that person who asked that question anonymously if you're looking for those statistics do drop us an email I'll be giving you the email address at the end of today's session and we'll be very happy to send that to you or your parents um but yeah thank you for that question does anyone have anything else they'd like to add to that yeah, if um, I could just yeah. add some things. Yeah, I, I think that definitely I, I agree, agree with Genevieve about what, what she was saying. I think the, the creative industry is so broad and there's so many jobs and so many things out there. You know, you, you can go it on your own. You could you can work for agencies, you could you could be a curator, you know, you could you could do art history, you could get into all these different avenues. And I think, yeah, it's way more important to study something you you're passionate about and you love and like like personally, I can't imagine me doing anything else. And I kind of knew that. I think I knew that when I was 17, 18, that I wanted to be in art, in design, just making, like creating something. That, and, you, and you can't squash that. I think it's, it's, it's bad for you to, to not let that passion come out. I mean, okay, you, you, you could keep it as a hobby or something, but why not? Why not take something and really run with it? You know, and, and that's, what, that's what life's about, isn't it? You, you were here once, you've got to do what you love, you know? <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And then we've had a question come through um, for Sam, which is, where's the best place to start when you want to pursue a musical career? Um, I think the best place to pursue a musical career is to surround yourself with lots of other musicians of all genres. Um, I was, I spent a little bit of time uh, teaching on the vocal artistry course at Access College and they have sites all over the country and that's the kind of place that you want to put yourself somewhere where you might be sat next to a rapper at lunchtime or you might be sat next to a jazz musician and you're just surrounded by people that are all making music but they're all making such complete different genres of music that you are just broadcast to all of these different places and actually going back to the the question we just had asked about you know what if a parent isn't really into what you want to do as a career I think taking them along to a place like that or taking them along to a, a college or a university which is focused on the creative arts would probably be a really good thing because if you're not a creative person if you're very logical or if you're you know, a mathematician or or any of those things or an accountant um your your mind sees the sensible it sees you know what's the safe bet what's the stable and actually as creatives we don't see that necessarily we we want to create because it's in our it's in our blood it's something that we have to do in order to survive so maybe to to take a parent who may be slightly um worried about that into somewhere where you will be surrounded by creative people giving you the best start to make your musical career or your artistic career however it may be um would perhaps help to reassure them that this can be a job but yeah i think to start your own music career everything has changed so much as well over the last 10 years all of a sudden you are your you are your own manager you are your own marketing department you are producing your own records you have you're your own artist you have to do your own artwork everything is on your shoulders so as well as surrounding yourself with musicians um make sure that you're on all of your socials and you're seeing how other people are marketing them you know write down any good ideas of marketing campaigns that you see and adapt them and use them yourself but it's really important that you become a musician who can do all of those things as well as make your own album. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Um, and we've had a question through for everyone really, um, which is, have you ever wanted to quit and how have you overcome it? 
Um, so on that one, I'll come to Joseph, I think, first. <laughs> yes. Um, the <clears throat> there's obviously there's highs and lows of the um, acting theatre industry. Um, one of the hardest things is periods of when it's quiet and you're not getting any auditions um, or there's no work. Um, and that is when I've been tested and thought, I don't think I can do this. Um, um, but then I have had to flip it on his head in times of where it's been quiet, um, use them times to reflect, to train, um, to keep learning, um, to write. That is when I first um, got into writing really, when times were quite quiet and I was thinking, I can't do this anymore. Um, but like what Sam said, um, if you're a creative, um, you want to you want to take them risks and keep going. Um, and that is when I took the time to write and things like that. Um, and yeah, reflect on yourself and work on yourself. You've always got a graft. Um, unfortunately, as an actor, um, you will get time. Like I just said about the times of period, that's when I didn't want to quit. I've had to do agency work. Um, I'm from the Fens, so land work is really big. Like going and picking apples, counting bulbs from snowdrop bulbs and plants and things like that um cleaner i've had to do all sorts of things when there's been times when it has been quiet because you always have to graft um that's kind of a work ethic is in is in me um but yes there has been times when i wanted to quit and what keeps me going is because um i couldn't like what owen said earlier i do not i cannot imagine myself doing anything else brilliant thank you yeah and sam uh, yeah, I've wanted to quit numerous times. <laughs> I think there's been a couple of days where I actually have, you know, I've, I've quit and I've, I've told my team, no, I'm not, I'm not coming in today, but they all know that that's just a, a blip. I feel like, again, I'm a bit dramatic potentially, so that's what happens and everyone knows that. But it's kind of touching on what Joseph said about doing agency work and grafting, it's exhausting being a freelancer sometimes because you are always looking for the work. Even when you're doing the work, you're looking for the next bit of work, not having the stability of knowing that you're going to have a salary that's going to hit this amount next month and that's going to be you know, regular throughout the year. Um, it, can be, it can be really exhausting. And I think I've been overwhelmed with that a couple of times, um, not having that stability. However, when I'm on, on those points where I, I feel like I want to quit and get a nine to five job, um, I remind myself that for me, the value in being a freelancer is being in charge of my own life and being able to set my working hours and being able to decide what projects I want to do, who I want to work with. You know, if I wake up in the morning and I'm not feeling it, I can start half an hour later. That to me has huge value and it makes all of the exhaustion of trying to find work worthwhile. Great, thank you. And Owen, what about you? I think I think similar. I mean, I, I'm I've kind of got two things in my career at the moment. I'm, I'm a sort of designer and an illustrator, but definitely when I was more of a designer, I I was working in some very high pressure environments, very um, just rushing through the work. And I think I I changed a few roles. I changed roles, uh, moved back to Norfolk from London, and I, I learned to love design again through almost wanting to just throw it out and not do it anymore. I said, right, I'm just going to draw pictures now, but that was a bit unrealistic at the time. So I, I've learned to, to, to appreciate what I do like about design work. Um, and then when it comes to, yeah, being a freelancer, yeah, yeah, Sam's very right. Uh, when you're very busy, you've still got to think what's going to happen in two weeks time, what's happening in three weeks time. So you, you, you're really deep in some huge job, but then I'm, I'm then emailing people potentially for new jobs and replying to quotes and you've got to wear all these hats at the same time. And, and at the moment you drop one ball, it, 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 it'll, you know, you, it, it'll affect, you know, your work. So you've, you're just going to keep going. And if you love it and you're passionate, you will, you, you'll do it because you, you enjoy it, you know. Um, so, yeah. Great. Thank you. And Genevieve, do you have anything to add to that about your experience? Yeah, I think there's a real kind of, I think the arts can feel a bit like, um, you know, you're on this kind of constant treadmill. I think it does tap into a lot of your kind of personal resilience. You know, there's the stuff that people would see, you know, the kind of performance or the exhibition or, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of announcement of a grant or, you know, whatever it is, that kind of public facing thing. 
yeah and then there's the kind of work which was like the big <laughs> maybe you know the kind of the writing the funding bid and the kind of doing the project management side of it and the admin and the books and the ordering materials and the kind of people management and and all that kind of stuff that people don't really see and I think that's the stuff that kind of gives you that that's where you have to kind of dig into a lot of kind of personal grit a lot of the time and I think this year with with COVID was the first time that I wanted to quit you know that's the first time um in in my um community arts arts career and, and the way I overcame that was um by really reaching out and being very honest to my peers so other people that are artist teachers who are community arts practitioners like me people who are gallery and museum educators you know who are in a similar situation who you know likewise had you know all of their kind of freelance work completely you know wiped out for the year you know there was there was a time in in March where you know I had nothing in my diary for the rest of the year and I wanted to bin my diary because it was just like crossings out but actually it was reaching out to other people who were in a similar situation that you know kind of made me you know had that kind of peer support around me and also being able to really you kind of got to switch into a almost like quite a logical maybe business minded almost to say right this what is the situation you know what can I actually do you know what can't I do you know where can I put my energy and how can I adapt and actually I found that you know through this kind of COVID situation and the lockdowns um, you know I have been able to adapt and um, sort of pull you know through doesn't mean it hasn't been hard but you just got to tap into your own you know resilience and reach out to people around you I think brilliant and I'm personally really glad that you didn't quit because then you went on to do some amazing workshops with us which I really loved being involved with so and oh, taking yeah. part in so there <laughs> you go and <laughs> um, and then we've had um another question about your specific industry so this is for each of you um and whether the industry has lived up to your expectations of it. So I'll come around again to each of you. So if we start with Joseph, maybe, about your industry and did it live up to your expectations? Um, it was better than I thought it was going to be um, when I first when I when I first started working, um, because you got to meet some absolutely fantastic people. Um, some people not so fantastic, obviously that it's probably the same over all, over all of the industries um but yeah you get to work with some fantastic people uh, we've, we've mentioned about networking um being able to make them co connections um with producers directors theatres venues um which was all i didn't expect that to be a thing being able to put your own work on um so yeah it was better than what i originally expected there is some obviously bad parts of it but that comes with all of it I think if especially in making your own work you get to choose who you want to work with um you get to choose your fantastic producers your directors your event you get to make liaison with these amazing venues like the Norwich Arts Centre um which I was lucky enough to work with and you get to, yeah you get to choose them people um and that was something that I was that was beyond my expect I didn't expect that to be like that um so yeah, it was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Brilliant. Which is with joy, yeah. Thank you. And Owen, what about you? Yeah, I, I would say similar. Yeah, I'm just looking. I've made some notes. Uh, just some notes I've got here. Um, I think it's easy to forget how lucky you 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 are if you if you're working in the creative industry and and you know um you know as a, as a designer working working in industry the roles are often very you know 200 people apply for the role that you you'll be working in you know so I think. You can't. You, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that, and you think, "Oh, well, um, I'm bored of this now," you know. But just step back and think, what, "What's the alternative?" You know, you're doing something you studied, and you're doing something going out in the world, and you're being being creative. And yeah, by and large, you you can work with some really inspiring people, um, and it's and it's and it's a great place to be to be able to be creative and be paid for it. You know, um, and people paying you for your opinion, your skills, um, and connecting with people through through your work I think is good so yeah it's, it lives up to my expectations yeah brilliant thank you and Genevieve so I had no expectation because I didn't know you could do a thing like community arts so sometimes known as 
participatory arts, sometimes known as socially engaged arts. You know, you are an artist individual going into a, you know, a day centre or a school or with a group or you make your own group. You go into a library, a museum, you work in a park, you work outdoors, you work with people. I didn't know that that existed. I knew about art teachers and I think that was about it. I didn't know what else you would do. And I kind of thought that an artist would be someone alone in their studio, probably with an easel, maybe, with, you know, paint palette and a very kind of cliche, like something from, you know, really like a naff film. But, you know, I didn't know that there was this this way that you work with people and you're in that collaborative process and that's the art making is what we come up with together. So I had no expectation and there is no set career path with community arts. You know, you might have a community artist who, you know, like Joseph has come from an acting background and, and works with groups with acting. Like, you know, Sam could be, you know, a music someone who's from a kind of musical background, like Owen, it could be kind of fine art and illustration, community arts. You know, for me, my background is in photography, but I don't exclusively work in that. So it's a really kind of flexible thing. And I didn't know that you could be so flexible. And like Joseph said about picking the people that you want to work with, you know, I, I get the opportunity to kind of choose my co-collaborators. And um, yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. So um no expectations therefore everything's a bonus I think <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way of looking at things um so Sam will come to you as well on that one um I think now the music industry meets and exceeds my expectations when I first started in it around about 10 12 years ago um there was huge inequality with women in the music industry there were some just massive problems um gigs happening and girls not being included, women not being asked to play shows. Um, oh, just the whole stream of things that were wrong. Um, but what's been brilliant for me is seeing that change over the last 10 years and it's becoming a non-issue now. I mean, there's still problems, but it is becoming much, much better. There's the 50-50 split now that lots of festivals try and match. So they've got 50% women against men performing on lineups. And these kind of things are really positive. So I love to see, I love to see those changes in the music industry. So yeah, it was tough to begin with, but I think anybody coming into it now, particularly women, I think um, you're, you're gonna be much, much better off than I was 10 years ago. Brilliant, thank you. And then we've had a question about um, how you see the arts changing post COVID. Do you think young people will have the same opportunities to perform? And what will the new normal look like for your career? So on that one, I'll come round to each of you again, but maybe Joseph will start with you on that one. Um, yes, so um, I've mentioned a few times, um, I've just worked with the Norwich Arts Centre and we did that just before we performed on the, the Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, we live streamed and then we went into lockdown the next day. Um, having to live stream a show was something that I'd never ever had to do before. Um, that is something that I think will probably be, we're having talks about um, being able to do that more, live streaming, live performances um, and setting up cameras within a, a theatre space, but not acting for film. Um, I think that is something that we're going to be going down the road of, which is completely different. I don't think, um, I think if you are a part of a theatre company or part of a, yeah, part of a theatre company that is thinking for, forward in terms of how we can, how you can do this online um, and being able to stream and services and stuff, think like, then you're on the way forward. I think you're onto something. Um, unfortunately, we've got, this is, just the future and we've got a that's the kind of thing we're going to have to look into doing um but yeah live streaming services um i don't think it will stop people's um, um it, it could i think hmm, that's a hard quote i don't think it will stop people um getting chances to perform it's just you have to look at it in a different way looking at it in a different lens i guess um a, a live stream lens but yeah <laughs> <That's what I'm... laughs> brilliant thank you and Genevieve what about um you and your kind of area of work um so so my, for the you know the first sort of nine ten years of my career it's been me going into a into a space with a group of people 
and interacting in that way. And so I've never had to learn anything to do with digital whatsoever. It's been, you know, we're just using our hands, using our art materials, using our eyes, our senses, and working together in a room. Well, no, <laughs> none of that is possible. So I've had, to, you know, I've learned a lot. And actually, I'm re at first I thought, oh no, this is this is going to be beyond me, you know, recording videos and doing kind of live streams, putting together resource packs um, of creative um, activities for, you know, groups. But actually, I'm really quite grateful for that opportunity because I think actually I can see that, you know, community and participatory work is going to be um, probably a mix of blended opportunities where you might go out with a group and work face to face. You might do a little bit of online. There might be a kind of a video that people can access at home, a resource pack that people can enjoy in their own time. And actually um, what I've found from the feedback, the different audiences that I've been working with is actually in some cases um, accessing um, opportunities online um, digitally, for example, videos has opened up that access and, you know, otherwise that person would not have get engaged in that opportunity if it was face to face. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, I think that this has really opened up accessibility. It, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, it means that if you're living in a rural location, for example, you don't have the worry of transport, but then it also raises the issue of things like rural internet access and um, digital poverty. So I would say that actually I can see that in the kind of community arts area of the arts sector, there will be a lots of, there is lots of learning and there is now more investment around how do we reach people digitally or how do we reach people, you know, through the post, you know, the post has been kind of, you know, resurrected as a way that we can, you know, keep a relationship with people and keep in touch. So I think there's definite adaptability and thinking about different blended ways a mix of face-to-face -face and a mix of digital and a mix of things, you know, reaching people kind of through the post or, you know, by other means, I think feels like a good way forward. Brilliant, thank you. And then Sam, what about you? Has it been different for you? Um, what are your thoughts of the future of your kind of industry? Well, I think um, similar to Genevieve, we've had to find digital ways. We've had to find solutions. Um, so our teachers are now all set up so they can teach from our studios here in Norwich digitally into schools if need be. And that was something that we were able to support with um, the Culture Recovery Fund grant from the Arts Council. So um, we're very grateful for that. That means that the business is kind of future proofed um, for if this should happen again. But in regards to gigs, I was actually having this conversation with my, my seven year old niece the other day. Um, I remember when I was about 15, 14, 15, going to my first gig, I probably shouldn't have been there, and I was, <laughs> I was down the front, and it was hot and sweaty, and people were throwing beer on me, and it was fantastic, and we were all shoulder to shoulder, and um, I don't know if she will ever get to experience that, and that actually scares the life out of me now, because some of those live music experiences, which were so immersive, and so ridiculously brilliant, is she going to get to experience that at any point? Is this a change in gigs now that's gonna, gonna be a permanent one? I really hope not, because as a musician, when you're in that room and you're giving the gift of the performance, I know that sounds quite airy-fairy and artsy, <laughs> but it's exactly that. When you're giving the gift, it's so, it's so difficult to replicate that over a live stream. And Joseph, I'm sure you'll agree with me, it's better than nothing, but it's not good enough for a permanent solution. So, I mean, I think that it's gonna change and it's probably gonna be different for the next couple of years until we're all vaccinated or whatever it may be. I just personally really hope that we get back to those gigs where we're all on like <laughs> sticky floors upstairs in the waterfront or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And Owen, what about your situation and the future for you and your kind of area in the arts? Yeah, I think, um, especially with more illustration kind of work, um, I've noticed that, you know, people have been wanting to um, buy more art, they've been wanting to kind of commission it as well and as, as a way of, um, I don't know, gifting things to friends and family. Like I, I do quite a lot of um, personalized um, kind of illustrations where it's it's someone and it's like their their, their first house or is it um, a present for someone drawing the people's pets things like that I mean things where 
I don't know, someone can hold something in their hand uh, that, that someone's made just for them. And there's, I think, um, yeah, people want um, something that's that's made by hand and it's got that connection. And I think, yeah, us as humans, we want that, phys- we want that connection. We want to speak to people, we want to connect with people. And I think um, through drawing and some stuff that's handmade, I think it does reinforce that. And I've done quite a few um, projects recently where I've been drawing um, shop fronts. Um, I've been sort of, people have connected with me who are running shops. And obviously the high street's crazy struggling at the moment as uh, and, uh, until whatever the, the update is in December. Um, so people want to really say to people, look, we've got a physical shop. Here's a picture of it. Do you remember this? You know, and it's and it's kind of um, it's as simple as that. They're reminding their cu- their customers online. We've got a shop. You know, it's here. We can we can sell you stuff online. And it's yeah, it's kind of reinforcing that. But it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, we're coming towards the end of our time, but I think we've probably got um, time for a couple more questions, if I can squeeze them in. Um, so one that we've had, I'll come back to you, Owen, on this, is should yeah. I worry if I don't know what to do yet? Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think you should, and I think you should, um, teachers, parents may pressure you and you think, right, what, what's your career? Where, where do you want to go? You know, what are you going to do? I think the most important thing is to is to um, st- study and pursue what you're passionate about and and what you're good at. Sometimes what you're good at may not be what you enjoy, so you, you've got to kind of get that balance right. Um, but I think follow your heart, um, and hopefully, you know, parents, teachers would respect that and think y- you're going to commit yourself to something you really enjoy, and and and. You, you wouldn't be able to have the same level of commitment if you didn't enjoy the subject. So yeah, th- that's definitely what I did. Great, thank you. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add to that? Sam, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I, I genuinely think, and it's very difficult to do this at a young age, but you have to almost weigh up your future. Would you like to be happy doing something you adore? <laughs> or would you like to be, I don't know, very rich doing something that perhaps you don't want to wake up every morning and do and I remember and it was actually a music teacher who said to me Sam you should train to be a solicitor I knew even then that I would be a horrendous solicitor that was a bad idea no one else can tell you what's going to be a good career path for you only you know yourself only you know what you want to do um and yeah just be aware that if you're working in the arts in whatever capacity is going to be tough but it will probably make you very happy great thank you does anybody else have anything they want to add to that no that's fine um and then one final question i think is um what what did you do early on and how did you get experience when you were starting out um so genevieve i'll come to you on that one so I started out by um, volunteering it as a total accident that I got into community arts. So um, when I was studying um, photography at the University of Westminster, we had to do a work experience module and I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was doing something that I enjoyed doing. So I tried to apply at a gallery internship and I just, it was, I'm glad they, I'm so glad they didn't choose me because it it I was bored just I it just felt like like this is other thing on this other level they were just talking a language I just didn't understand and actually it was just by a kind of a desperation of there was an advert for a charity who was putting together um an exhibition and there would also be some community workshops and you could get an arts award and I thought oh great it's got the word exhibition in it that'll do as a work experience opportunity so I um just went along and then discovered this thing called community arts that they they were doing. And um, yeah, it was just by kind of this serendipity really um, that I found it and loved it. So I think, yeah, like the last question about, you know, not knowing what you want to do. I think just let, let life happen. You know, things aren't all just tied up. It's just let it, let it happen and see what, what happens to you because you never quite know um, what you're going to discover. 
Great, thank you. Um, so we've actually kind of run out of time now, um, but I'd really like to thank everyone for joining us today, particularly our wonderful panellists and for their amazing input to answer all of your questions. And thank you for joining us and for submitting those questions to us today. Um, we really hope it's been helpful and hopefully you're leaving inspired to find out more about your own options and also your own future creative careers. Do also remember to engage with the rest of the Engage Works program. There's some more great panel sessions coming up tomorrow, as well as a range of different activities that you can still sign up to. And you can do this via the Young Norfolk Arts website. Um, so I'll give you the address now. It's www.youngnorfolkarts.org.uk forward slash engage hyphen works. Um, so do have a look there and they've got lots of information there about the rest of the programme. If you did want to find out some more information about NUA specifically, I would really recommend coming along to one of our open days. And we've actually got an online open day coming up later this week. And as part of that online open day, you'll, you'll hear all about the different courses that we offer, as well as having an opportunity to ask your questions directly to one of our academics and also a whole range of our current students. So you can have a chat to them and find out what the student experience is really like at NUA. We'll also be starting up our campus tours again in early December, which is very exciting. Um, so if you want to come and see what a creative campus is like in person and also chat to some of our students in person, that's a brilliant opportunity to be able to do so. So if you'd like more information about our open days or those campus tours, I recommend heading over to our website, which is www.nua.ac.uk. Um, or you can get in contact with us by email at studentrecruitment at nua.ac.uk. Um, and also, if you were looking for that Your Creative Future booklet that I mentioned earlier, just drop us an email there and we can get a copy out to you in the post. So finally, a big thank you again um, for everyone who joined us today, including our lovely panellists. And we hope to see or hear from you again soon. So thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>